Hey guys, a uh, little different kind of video here, mostly because um, just, just because it features other people. Um, uh, we're basically playing D and D. I mean, we're not basically doing it; we are literally doing that. Um, it's uh, my friend the Sten, who you uh, may know as the artist on this channel, and uh, our mutual friend Megan. We are playing as a human blood hunter, although Megan does not know precisely how blood hunters work, and I'm out of practice on them because uh, I didn't fully read the article after their thing got changed around. And I am playing a uh, purple moon elf uh, eldritch fighter. Uh, my name is Bauxite, and her name is Lydia Elizabeth. Um, longer video, so. I hope you have something else to do while while it's going on, but uh yeah. This is uh this is the this is the thing. Last either of you to remember is a vague blur. A day before you had existed, you know it must have. The last thing you remember is the smell of a book. The next thing you know, you wake up on your back in the dark. And you feel pressure on either side of your arms and something beneath your feet, but you cannot see in front of you, even with your eyes wide open. Go for it. This is terrible. Um, yeah. Who is that? Hello? Hi. Hello? Oh, do I have dark vision on? I have dark vision. Yes, it does not matter. You can see nothing. Damn. Okay. Um, hi. My dark vision doesn't work. That's the voice you hear is muffled. You oh. can hear it. <laughs> like that. Are we... T are we restrained? Uh, moving your hands, you can move them, but you can get them no further than maybe about half a foot above your ribcage before they strike something. Oh, Solid. Christ. Are we in a coffin? Can't see, it's dark. Oh no. Not this again. <laughs> it must be Tuesday. Um, oh lord. Can I reach um, my pockets from here? Um, it takes a little bit of jimmying, um, but you can get into your pockets, yes. I'm very limber. I'm an elf, by the way. Um, you can reach them. It feels like you're wearing the same outfit you remember. Um, it's kind of hard to remember everything. Such a thick blur right now. Um, but there's nothing in them when you reach for them. Ah. Just your nice uh, legs stuff. Well, there goes plan A. I guess I'll just start like punching the 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 box above me. You want to give me a strength roll? Sure. Let's see if I remember the commands. No, I don't. So I got my real dice because I don't remember commands. <laughs> I rolled great. 14. All right. So you're in this cramped little box. You know, you can reach your arm maybe about half a foot off your rib cage. Good. Uh, whatever's up in front of you. And it moves pretty easily out of the way. Okay. Almost immediately, it shoves upwards and you're hit with a dim sort of light. It stings your eyes and you wonder how long you've been in there um but you've got it partially open um cool. elizabeth you hear a solid thud uh from your right was that you i think so well can you see me i'm afraid i don't have dark vision i i'm gonna roll out of my anything. box all right um sitting up in the box, you see you are indeed in an old-fashioned coffin. Um, the ground, well, the space beneath you, you would thought it was kind of uncomfortable. Uh, you're laying on a corpse, so that's pretty fun. Um, what does the corpse look around, like? It is very decayed to the point that you're, it's not even a full skeleton. It's mostly just small, I don't even want to call them shards, it's dust. Uh, Enough that you know it was a body. So no uh, flesh looking around then, huh? the room, well, Yeah, no, it's, it's stripped. Not even, like, if you tried picking it up, it would go through your fingertips. Um, 
glancing around the room, almost, you're almost in what looks like a kind of big broom closet. Um, it's very cramped in here. There is, a, there is a torch on either side of a door in front of you. Looking to your left, you see that there are two coffins. That's the only thing you see in the room. Okay. Do I have any weapons? Um, patting yourself down, you saw all you were in were the clothes you last remembered. Okay. I will pour some of the corpse dust into my pocket. You have a pocket full of nice, shifty, sand-like corpse dust. Kind of stains your fingertips like ash. I resist the urge to lick it off like I'm eating Doritos, and I'm going to go look in one of the other coffin. Are you going to do the one directly beside you or the one on the farther end? There are the two. Um, I'm going to do the farther one first. All right. Um... Give me a strength check for the uh, top of the coffin. Ooh, big boy. Okay, and I will remember to add my bonus this time. I think it's this. Wow. All right. Um, <laughs> you're going in there, and you go to move the top of the coffin box, but you're so struck by how much the dust on your hands looks like Doritos that... <laughs> Fumble with the box lid. It's not very heavily laid, so it shifts under your hands, but you don't manage to move it off because you're so distracted. <clears throat> I will um go ahead and go to the other coffin, see if I can <laughs> move that one. <laughs> Drink roll. Right, right. Put all my points into decks, and now here we are. Right. That one, Elizabeth, at first you're in darkness and then suddenly there is dim light. Um, it's a lot like sitting by candles, but enough to, that you see a silhouette of an elf above you. Um, looking up at a stone ceiling, an elf silhouette. New um, friend, I do hope that's you. I sure do too. <laughs> uh, the mouth does seem to move in correspondence, so the odds are in your favor here. Okay, that's, that's good. That's good. Hello. Hi. Um, you're able to sit up now, if you would like. Um, is, uh, you are now aware, you are most certainly in a coffin. Old fashioned, looks like the ones back in like the vampire days. Do very about in stories. Elizabeth is going to like, sit up and start sort of like, panic like wiggling her hands a little bit like ew 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 <laughs> and try and sort of scramble out of the coffin uh, the coffins are set on the floor so it's not too hard at this point you notice there's another coffin to your left uh, the lid was bumped but not moved and seems to have a small handprint on it made of like an ashy substance your friend just made i'm gonna try and lift it up <laughs> me a strength or uh you can roll an advantage if he helps you or vice I, versa i will in fact assist awesome because that first one was a one <laughs> <laughs> you're so startled okay that's a hang on that's oh. 21 oh I'll <laughs> stress out. yeah you've got that panic you wanted out of the coffin when you stepped out of your coffin you noticed that you were laying on while it's dark and dusty that looked like a skull. You're grossed out. So you throw open this coffin lid. It rolls over and hits the wall that's, I mean, only like half a foot away. Anyway, this is a small room. Inside, you find a dwarf who, looking at her body, the first thing you think is that she's incomplete. Um, because it is a whole body. Um, almost looks alive. But it's as though parts of her, it's not that they were cut off. They just weren't there to begin with. Um, she appears to be in some sort of armor that seems entirely fused to her skin. Um, but glancing down, you do notice that she has two weapons at her hip. What are the weapons? Um, they are both in sheaths. One is fairly long. The other one seems about the size of a forearm. No, I mean, like, are they bladed weapons? Are they like a crossbow? Yes, they're both, they both seem to be blades of some sort. I'm just going to... Fucking take one of them. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, pull it out. You guys see that there is a long sword and a relatively fair sized dagger. Wonderful. And they're both really good quality. Like holding them up. Um, uh, our elf boy, you look at it. You can kind of see your reflection. Uh, you don't look as bad as you thought you did. Uh, Damn straight. Like you got a really nice tap. Yeah. Uh, reflection getting to me. Elizabeth, you can't see much of anything because it's pretty dark. You're in candlelight, but you can tell it's a nice sword. Um, Alfred, what's your name? I forgot. Sorry. It's Boxite. Okay. I do. do you yeah. want the full name? I can... Yeah, just pronounce it for my sake. Okay. It is Bauxite Devonwind. Beautiful. That's Die yeah. Bin Wind. Yes. And then, uh, dearest Megan, can you pronounce yours just in case? I am Lady Elizabeth Boreas. Don't forget Lady. It's the important part. It's very important. It's very important to her and no one else. Very important lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, you both have weapons in your arms. Um, looking down at this body, you almost don't want to call it a corpse. It looks closer to maybe a mannequin of some sort. Um, kind of creeps you out looking at her. I will poke it. Um, watching it, it feels... Kind of like um, perhaps a, like a doll a sister or friend would have had growing up where it's not quite made of cloth, but it's not glass. Like okay. an uncomfortable foam material. Uh, okay. Can I uh, roll like a wisdom check and see if I can figure out what the fuck this thing's deal is? Because uh, I have advantage call- on tra- things against fey, fiends, and undead. Um, you can try an Arcana roll. Okay, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I have a plus zero to Arcana, so... <laughs> okay, that's three. Um, you're not sure? It kind of creeps you out. Your back is covered in corpse dust. I don't know, you're pretty uncomfortable right now. <sighs> um, within this room... So I had mentioned there are two torches. They're on either side of a door. Beyond that, there are no other doors or windows in this room. It is a small closet space almost. I'm going to try the door. Um, It's got a handle that turns when you barely touch it and pushes out open into a small hallway. Um, You can't see much in front of you, but uh, Boxite, as you look down, you can see there's a staircase at the end. Cool. Um, well, I don't, I don't know about you, but I'm very tired of this room full of dead things. Shall gonna, we go? Yeah, I'm going to take a torch and I'm just going to throw it down the hallway because I don't need it. So she can have the other one. Um, just to, you know, loosen up any bats or anything that may be down there. You lift the torch up out of the sconce. It comes out pretty easily and you chuck it down the hallway. It's a short hallway, maybe about 10 feet, 15 feet max. Uh, it bounces along the floor and then it comes to a standstill. You suspect it's some sort of magical fire because the flames still flicker on but don't do anything. Um, the hallway seems to be entirely empty. Like the room you were in, it is stone. Um, it almost, it's like aged stone, but there's no significant cracks or ruin to it. It just seems to be a regular stone hallway. The staircase it comes bouncing up against also seems to be made out of stone. The hallway's fairly narrow. Um, there's nothing along the walls. You can see the ceiling. It's pretty short. So the staircase up or staircase down? Oh. Okay. Um, so this is rather awkward what my groceries got here. Go ahead. Can we can we just like can we take a, a like four minute break for me to go hustle some groceries? To your groceries, boy. <laughs> Alright, I'll be right back. I'll pause Ooh. the recording. Of course. Alright, I'll be right yeah. back. Yeah, good mm. luck. one spell as a feat Ooh. and my spell is or my feat is telepathic oh. which means I can do detect thought Hell like, yeah. for free once per long rest see that's some fun stuff hey did and I miss I anything can important communicate with things. Oh, no I was um, just asking character questions cool yeah I like that alright I'll be good to resume uh, my dudes 
the homies. Yes, they're all inside mm. the home. That's yeah. good. Where the groceries should be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they should be in my stomach. In your stomach? My stomach. <laughs> Stomach. <laughs> all adults. All right. <laughs> to resume, let's do this. All right. So hallway? You guys are in a hallway, and there's a staircase leading upwards at the end. What y'all doing? I've got the other torch, and I'm already sick of this damsel bullshit, so I'm just gonna start going up the stairs. Like a plan? I will follow uh, her. Um, the staircase is pretty narrow, so you have to pretty much go one after the other. Um, it doesn't go up very far. Only 15 steps, and it comes out into a small, um, I'm going to call it an entryway. Um, it's more so like a, there's a singular door along a wall to your left. There's a singular one to, to the wall on your right. Hmm. Room itself, uh, there is a rug, and there is a painting of a, I assume, teenage boy. It's a very poorly done painting, so he looks really ugly. Um, he's Maybe got he's dark brown mustache. Could be beautiful, but it's one of those painting styles where they don't know how to draw people who aren't like forty. <laughs> like all those medieval sheep paintings. My favorite. Those pictures of babies that just look like fully grown men but small. That's what it looks like, essentially. One of those. <laughs> Maybe babies being new and like pretty is like. Maybe cute babies is just a new tens thing, you know? Oh, babies were ugly before 2010. Can confirm. Yeah. As a baby born before 2010. As a baby now, I can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in this room, you've got a rug, a painting, and a door to your left and right. Okay, how how nice is the rug? Um, It's pretty high quality, all things considered. Um... Looking at it, it's um, not, like, dusty or anything. Nowhere in here has been dusty so far. Um, I mean, it definitely looks a bit more expensive than you can afford. Um, Lady Elizabeth, you've seen some of these around, and you know they're not, like, the highest end, but they're still pretty nice. Okay. I will look underneath the rug. Mm -hmm. um, lifting it, you just see a stone floor. Okay. I will roll it up and put it over my shoulder then. Uh, all right. It's about a six foot rug, so it's pretty heavy, but I mean, got a rug on your shoulder now. Cool. I have to ask, are you planning on stealing everything that is not nailed down? I mean, I wasn't planning on it, but if it happens, then it happens, you know? Sure. Now tell me about this painting some more. I'm looking at it. So it's essentially a portrait of a, you're guessing a teenager by this point. And he seems to be sitting on a throne of some sort, posed in a way that he thinks he looks really cool. You know the pose. You've done the pose. <laughs> he does not look very cool at all. It's like that one uh, photo shoot, the teenager photo shoot. Oh my but, god. Uh, it's one of those. Um, it's not done very well. Um, it's in a very nice frame, though. Um, it seems in really good quality. Human teenager, elf teenager, dwarf Sorry. teenager? Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, uh, human teenager, as far as you can tell, his ears are rounded. Okay. I will... <laughs> Does it come off the wall very easily? Um, pulling at it, you can tell there is a tack on the top two corners that hold it up. You can probably remove it if you tried. I'll just slip Strength. that off. Strength to get it off. Okay. Could have gotten my dice while I was getting my groceries, but I decided to not to. If you can't get this painting off the wall, I'm not helping you. Um, all right, 12. Um, so you pull at it, and for a second, you're, you're thinking it's not going to come off. You're feeling a little defeated because first the coffin lid, now this. But you give it one last pull, and it comes off the wall. Um, you can see a little print, sort of, uh, where it had hung, and you assume it's been hanging there for a pretty long time. Um, but there's nothing on the wall, really, beyond that. And okay. then two little taps. Well, or I guess they're nails. But. 
I'll go ahead and just sling that under my arm. Yep. Uh, this painting is a lot larger. Um, it come sitting on the floor. It comes directly up to beneath your elbow, so it tucks in real nice. Cool. Are yeah. you done? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm done. Who are you? Also, I am Boxite Demonwind, which is well, definitely my I real am... name, and I'm a real elf. I know this is unconnected, but definitely a real name. Definitely a real elf. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not just a name I picked out of a dictionary. You never do that. that. I'm feeling very called out right now. <laughs> Listen, North South is an icon and we love them. Look, <laughs> non-binary people have to have names that are all objects. Hey, what's up, it's Storm? True. My friend Brick. <laughs> I I know a guy named Bronze. Their mm. name is Bronze. Oh my god, I love that actually. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I call them bro sometimes for short. <laughs> and then sometimes when we want to piss them off. Z just the other half of the name. Z yeah, bro and Z <laughs> Wow. Peak. It's really hard to Peak pronounce humor. the N. Yeah, you have stripped the room of its furniture. You have a door to your left, a door to your right. Can I open either of the doors and sort of peek my head in? Which one you tried? I'm going to try the one on the right first. Mm -hmm. um, opening the door on your right, it's not locked. It comes open pretty easily. It opens to a very large sort of... Um, call it a foyer of some sort um the ground is carpeted uh real rich color um it uh there are more rugs in here there are some Ooh. cabinets up against the wall more paintings um a chandelier hangs overhead um you can see there is a very thick gold encrusted door that comes out a good foot from the wall you can see a door directly across the room from you and one uh, to the right of you, parallel to the golden door. Well, golden crust, it generally means good things. Yes. Um, on the other side of the golden crusted door, on a table, there seems to be a doll of some sort. Um, oh, it's no. very large. A lot of dolls in this house. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> so Human me hates that. Can I? Yikes. <laughs> I'm going to check both of these doors just to see if either of them lead out. I don't feel particularly confident about that, though. Uh, yeah. Um, you walk into the entry room, uh, the, the foyer. Um, carpet's really soft under your feet. Um, pretty comfortable. Um, the door that is opposite the golden one is not only locked, but you can't even jiggle the handle. Hmm. Uh, nothing you do seems to move the door at all. Um, the one that was parallel to the door you came out of opens fairly easily into a large library. Um, okay. The library is stocked with wall-to-wall -wall doors. Um, there are empty tables sitting in front of a few of them, and there is another door to your right at the end of the room. Okay. Um, I'm going to stash my stuff next to the exit door, just so I can get on the way out. Mm -hmm. Sit it next to the giant gold-encrusted door, and it stays. Yeah, all right. Can I just take um, the hinges uh, off the door? There are no hinges on this golden door. Damn. Um, looking at it, you can't, there's not even a handle. The only thing you see is in the very, very center of the door. You're only calling it a door because it's the shape of one. There is a sort of um, geometric shape about the size of your hand. It okay. seems like you can put something in there. There's that nothing. That sort of implies it's a magic really. door. And if it's a magic door, it might be a sentient door, which means I might be able to talk to it. You gonna flirt with my door? I might. <laughs> this happens too often for us. <laughs> it really does. Like, I can, I, I actually cannot count on one hand the number of times that people have run and have gotten into an argument with a door. No, it's, it's a good time, okay? It's really good for stress relief. Like, if I got a dime every time that I had an argument with a sapient door, I would legitimately have more than a dollar. <laughs> I love it. 
Um, That's impressive. As you are um, up next to this door, close enough to look at the thing, you can look at the table where the doll is. It's about the size of a toddler. Um, it seems to, it looks like a Hispanic human from all you can tell. She's got bangs um, and she's in a little pink dress. You notice out of the back, there is a very large wind up key, almost too large for her body. Hmm. And it's, I'm assuming it's just j like jammed in a socket of some kind. Um, looking around the back, there seems like the back of her dress is open. So you can see the key sticks in the back of her and just can be turned. Okay. I will twist it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, when you turn the key just slightly, before she had been slumping, she sits up a little bit. Okay. I've got my sword out. I ain't fucking with this. I'm going to wave my hand in front of her face. Um, doing so, nothing happens. Okay. Eyes are still shut. I like that. I'm going to take the key out and see what, what happens. Um, when you take the key out, the doll entirely slumps down. And it makes that noise, I assume. <laughs> that was... He's coming back. Anyway. Oxide, why must you touch the clearly haunted doll? I'm... Look, I'm always... What's the key made out of, actually? Um, it seems to be the same thing that the door is made out of. It's a, it's a golden color, but it's not as heavy as gold is. Um, it's got... Um, as you're holding it, you hadn't noticed before when you had been coming up the stairs because it had been so dark. But this place should be lit. As you're looking around, there are colors in the room. But they are muted. It, even on yourself. The clothes you had been wearing are grayer than they were before. Hmm. Looking at this key... There are uh, four colored, uh, tiny gems along the top, like about as big as your fingernail. You can tell that they're supposed to be colors. They are entirely gray. Weird. That seems to be a poor sign. Can I pry the gems out of the key with my knife? They do not budge. All right. Please stop trying to break things. I'm I just don't trying think supposed to be here. I'm just trying to milk all the cash out of this place I can. That's fair. What do you do? Look. What is your day job? Do you have a day job? Um, I have more of a night job if you catch my drift. <laughs> oh. I do indeed. I'm not a prostitute. Well. I just wanted to head that <laughs> off. I I can say with honesty that was not my initial reaction. Okay. I just... There's been some confusion in the past. Does that happen to you often? You'd be surprised. Huh. I mean, look at me. I am my, looking at you. My handsome purple skin's a little more gray in this light, but... I'm purple, by the You're way. You're a drow. No, I'm a moon elf. But very similar. Oh. I I will confess I do not know much about elven culture. Well, neither does 5e. The lore is really weak. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why we need to find a spell to reanimate Gary Gygax so we can start pimping the elves again. True. Get right on that. Anyway, so we're trapped in this evil mansion. <laughs> We're trapped in an evil mansion that's turning everything gray like some sort of Goosebumps book. Or possibly that episode of the Powerpuff Girls. Or also that episode of the Powerpuff Girls. Are we in a Goosebumps novel? I look I above me. Is there like is there like green dripping stuff and like a like a spooky font? <laughs> Does it say <laughs> by R.L. Stein beneath my feet? It doesn't, and you don't hear the, the, the music and there's no scary Labrador with evil eyes on the porch, because there's no porch. Oh, damn. Not yet, at least. There's time. <laughs> um, okay, so got uh, up close now. You can look at the door as well. It is a foot coming out of the wall. It's only a door because it's door in shape. And there is a palm-sized hole where something geometric can seemingly be pushed in. Ugh. Reminds me of the Bathory house. All those fancy doors. Dreadful okay. man. You would not want to make his acquaintance. 
Hmm. Well, I assume, due to your occupation, you have an above-average knowledge of how to escape locations? Yeah. Do you have any ideas? Um, what if we put the key in the hole? That um, seems fair enough. Give it an attempt. Um, the key itself, it is fairly large, but it is too small, or it's too small to fill the hole properly. This hole seems to need something geometric and fairly large. Like, it would take, like, the four of your hands stacked to replicate how deep it goes. Can we put the doll in the hole? Uh, no. As you pick up the doll, she's very light. Um, feels like a regular doll, um, but her body is solid and cannot be crumpled in. Okay. Please stop touching the haunted doll. I will leave the doll in the hole and let's go to another room, but I'll let you pick. <sighs> let's go to the library. Okay. Perhaps there will be something of use there. Um... The doll drops to the floor because the hole can most certainly not hold it. It is a toddler-sized uh, hole. Or it's a to toddler-sized doll, and this hole is about M size. Um, to head down into the library, these are wall-to-wall -wall libraries, uh, shelves. They are packed full of books. There are three tables in front of the shelves, and they are all empty with nothing on them. And there is a door at the end of the room. Actually, wait real quick. Can I go back and put the doll back on the table? Uh, she is very light. She sits on the table and slumps over because she's a doll. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to go back in the library. Very nice of you. That'll, de that'll decide your fate when we're fighting the final boss and it turns out that it's Doll of Dolls. <laughs> I, I tell you, I do not fuck with haunted dolls. This is regular human me speaking. Ah. <sighs> Whatever, let's get back to the mission. Are there any Ouija boards that I can go taunt some ghosts with? Uh, no. The only thing you see in here are books. Okay. Any haunted books? Um, you go and you pull one off a shelf, you throw it, it hits the ground. They smell like books as you're coming through one looking for any demons to crawl out or any sort of green goosebumps goo, you know. Um... Smell hits you and you remember, again, that the last thing you remember of your day today was the smell of an old book. Uh-huh. And none of these that. books are written by R.L. Stein, just to clear that out. No, oh, as you're looking, you, you at least don't see any, but those could be the top shelf books. You don't know. Uh, shelves are pretty tall. I, I would not uh, finger R.L. Stein to be top shelf uh, anywhere. I don't know what kind of place this is. It's our gospel. Or my Sir R.L. Stein will remember that when you come into his castle, okay? <laughs> There's a little a little prompt in the top in the top left of the screen just says R.L. Stein, Stein, Stein will remember, remember that. that. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the Mothman Bible all over again. Influence <laughs> lost, Jack Black. <laughs> okay. Okay, God. Can I just start thumbing through them, trying to look for anything about, like, lock picking or the house? I'm going to look for, like, any any of those, like, big Scooby-Doo books. Like, you pull them out and a secret passageway reveals itself. Investigation. Or like, clearly painted differently than the rest of the pack. Yeah, yeah, they're colored in differently. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say investigation for both of us? Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. No, you're good. I got a whole nine. All right. Um, so you start thumbing through the books just randomly, grabbing them off different portions of the shelves. It only takes you about 20 minutes to realize every book you pick up is fictional. It's, this seems to be fairy tale sort of library. Um, every one you grab, it's another fictional story. Some of them are clearly intended for children. Some of them are just soft fictional stories, but more catered toward adults because they have swear words in them. Very dangerous. Nice. Um, so those seem to be. Um, uh, outside, as you're glancing around, you, so, you know, you're looking for books that stand out. 
None of them do. They seem to be color-coded, arranged by some sort of system. After a while, you start just chucking them off the shelf because you're tired of this. It's been a good half hour of you just looking. They all just hit the ground regularly. These seem to be regular old books. Hmm. All right. Is there anything behind these shelves? Um, the shelves seem to be nailed to the wall. That doesn't mean there's nothing behind them. Yeah. I mean, if you want to look, you can, but this is your DM telling you there's nothing behind the bookshelves. Okay. okay. Um, mm-hmm. Can I access the ceiling by climbing on the bookshelf like a ladder? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, give me a dexterity. Roll. Okay. Saving throw. Roll. Okay. No words. Dex saving throw. Fuck, am I proficient in these? I'm gonna kill these dogs. Oh, it's the dogs. The prophesized dogs. I'm gonna kill them. <laughs> the harbingers. <laughs> we can take another break if you'd like. Should be fine. I think it just means my dad's coming home soon. <laughs> I hope they know I hate them. Anyway. Bjork. Bjork, they say. I think it's that because I think I have proficiency. Yeah, okay. Um, so you look up at this thing, at these shelves, you are tired of none of, none of these being like Scooby-Doo. You were ready for something cool to happen. So you scale with determination and you make it to the top. It's a good 25 feet of bookshelves, um, from up here. Um, you can see the shelves go all the way up to the top of the ceiling. Um, the upper shelves seem to be, I mean, it's more of the same books. You toss a few to make sure these ones aren't bugged too. None of them are R.L. Stein, unfortunately, because you were right. They're not top shelf material. But uh, coming up to the ceiling, you give it a, it's a solid stone ceiling. Um, there is a hanging light fixture of some sort. Um, seems to be just regular chain strung with candles on it, some sort of magical light keeping them lit. Um, you get a full look over the library. You don't see anything special about it. It looks like just a regular library. Well, now it's a mess because there's books all over the floor, but... Mm. You said that there was also a door. Mm-hmm. The very end. Kind of completely have ignored. Yeah. Um, you go to it. Open it. Yeah, I'm gonna go through it, kind of jimmy it, see if I can see if I can look look in at the very least. This one, like the other ones, it's unlocked. It opens to some sort of kitchen. Um, this one is a single entry room. There aren't any um, the routes to it that you can see. Um. Um, it's got big islands, um, some uh, big sort of freezer systems, you think, uh, stoves and stuff, but um, Place is it seems pretty familiar. empty, all things considered. Why would the library contain the only entrance to the kitchen? Are Sometimes we... when you're reading, you want a snack. Are we in the Clue the... Mansion? I was literally about to Google the Clue Ball. It is a complete accident. <laughs> <laughs> that clue on my brain. It's, it happens. It'd be like that. All right. I will make an insight check for any Tim Curry's. <laughs> okay, that's a joke I don't get. Tim Curry was in the Clue movie. There was a Clue movie? Are you for Please real right now? Home. We watch it together. It's now our first order on the table, and then we watch Hellboy. All right, canceling the session so we can all D and D Discord watch the Clue movie. I've only played the game. I'm sorry, dude. You so play good. the game we'll now. See life. the movie. That's what the trailer said. <laughs> the first thing me and Nia ever watched together, and her car got towed, and she had to stay the night. It was really bad. You know, I think play the game now. Watch the movie is also the tagline of the Battleship film. Amazing. Not a good movie. Well, they by share the a way. cinematic universe, you see. <laughs> the Hasbro cinematic universe. Absolutely We've beautiful. gotten really off track again. <laughs> uh, ten. God, we're in the fucking weeds. <laughs> what um, you doing? Uh, I found a kitchen. I don't know if that's important or not, but there's only one way in. 
I'm going I'm to hungry. I'm the going kitchen. to see if I can. I'm going to see if I can find anything to eat. I'm hungry. Investigation for the both of you if you want to look through this kitchen. All right. Lady Elizabeth is hungry. Lady Elizabeth going to eat. <laughs> I should just I should really just copy paste this because I'm typing it out every time. Thirteen. Alright, so both of you got about the same thing. Um so you start thumbing through the kitchen. Um you notice that there are a few dishes left in here and they're really nice quality dishes, all things considered, but a lot of them seem to be missing. Um like they were just removed. There are like empty spots in the cabinet where they had been. Like no no dust has gathered, so they've been removed recently. Um Thumbing through, uh, you find there is a half-eaten cake in the uh, the pantry or the uh, refrigerator section. Um, looks really nice. It's got some fruit on top. Um, you find some bread in the cabinet too. It seems like the place had been very recently stocked, but also very recently emptied. I'm gonna go for the bread because cake's not on on my diet. I'm gonna go <laughs> for the cake because I'm a hedonist. <laughs> Um, bread is bread. I mean, you know, it's soft. It's pretty good, all things considered. That cake, oh my god, that cake. You take one bite, you realize you would die for this cake. It's real good. That's about it, though. Should I make a diabetes saving throw? Absolutely, with disadvantage. <laughs> with disadvantage. What is that? Moon elves genetically predisposed for diabetes. Con constitution, I guess. <laughs> right, I think that's a seven. What the <laughs> fuck are we doing? All right. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, I gotta... you're sitting there. You're more powerful than this cake. You eat cakes like this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> they are no god of you. But man, does it taste good? I don't get diabetes. I don't catch diabetes. Look at me. You don't. You don't catch the diabetes. Congrats. The diabetes. It's true. You are safe this time. <laughs> this time. Having eaten, you guys feel some strength back. You hadn't realized how hungry you'd been. You don't know how long you were in there, but eating sure felt good. Cool. Well, this seems to be a dead end. So do we need to start again from the left hand door? Maybe there's something in the cupboards. Do the plates fit into the hole? Um, you would know, looking at them, you're looking for a geometric shape, um, something with multiple uh, sharp sides. All these plates are circular. Hmm. Circles are geometries. I guess you mean a polygon, though. I was going to say, like, what? I a polygon, sorry. Okay. Are we talking, like, a little pyramid? Are we talking, like, a D20 sort of thing? Yeah. Like... Um, it looks like so, Like if you had taken a D20 and stretched it long. Okay. The, the best long D20. A long, long D20. terrible, an... unbalanced D20. Let's find an ancient Egyptian D20 then. <laughs> yeah, keep your eyes off one of those. It'll be next it's to the RF part... Finals. It's part of the Yu-Gi-Oh set. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but ancient Egypt did in fact use D20s. I think I, I did read that somewhere. A great time to be alive. <laughs> ancient Egypt. <laughs> I bet it wasn't. Truly, the weebs of their generation. <laughs> yeah, back when Ric Flair was in power. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, while I'm here, can I can I go look out the? Uh, can I look for garlic or something? Um, as you're glancing around, um, you see a spice cabinet. I have a few cloves of garlic in there, along with uh, some onions. You see some strange sort of like. Red things that smell really sweet. Nice. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna score some uh, garlic and an onion. Uh, you stuff them in your pockets with the dead guy dust. Yeah. It's well, certainly spicy. Man, it's gonna be a problem if I go to season something and I mix up my pockets. <laughs> hmm. You, you know what? This needs pocket, some man. some corpse dust. Oh fuck! I put too much garlic in. When that happens, shit, I it's just a put a whole for vampires. clove of garlic. 
good time for everybody, okay? Anyway, yeah, Fantastic that's... Fantastic power deterrent. That's this ancient-ass Ptolemaic D, uh, D20. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Old as shit. Me too. Just like me. Amazing. An ancient 19-year-old or however old you are. <laughs> Which one of us is that directed at? I don't know, but now that I've gotten your age wrong on purpose, I will continue to get it wronger and wronger until I, you're in the negatives. <laughs> I'm just too sexual play the game, okay? <laughs> okay. Anyway. Hello, sir, the kitchen. Don't find anything of substance. Well, I mean, you found substance because you ate it. But, like, nothing else of use. In here. Yeah, we found, we found nothing of substance, but we found something of subsistence. That pun is bad and you should feel bad. I feel great. You're getting applause from God. Congrats. <laughs> All right. So we had the... I'm going to draw a map. So we had the room where we started in. Yes. Coffin room. Okay. It and had a went... hallway to a staircase. Yeah. Okay. Staircase came to a hall that had a door to the left, a door to the right. The door to the right led to an entryway. It had a golden door, a door across from it that was locked. A door across from the door you came in led to the library, led to the kitchen. I have no idea if this is correct, but this is what we're going to go ahead with. Uh, let's go check out that other door then. Um, you jog your way back there to the hallway where you stole the rug and the painting. Open up that other door. Go into a bathroom. No. <laughs> So is there take a moment and freshen up? Is there some like labored pun here? Like is there gonna be a bat in here or something? Oh, it's just a regular bathroom. Okay. It's well taken care of too. I'm going to go through the drawers. I wanna know if there's any like cosmetics and makeup or something. I Find also some do really that. nice soap. Uh, the soap has little pieces of flowers pressed into it. Oh shit. Seem untouched so far, like they were displaced. Um there's some hand towels sort of laying around. There is a mirror up above the uh, sort of uh, wash basin they have. Um, and you all are aware you are losing color a lot faster than you thought you were. Hmm. Um, but beyond that, you're both looking pretty good now that you've eaten. Um, um, I'm starting to think that we, ha we shouldn't have eaten. I mean, before... Uh, sorry, my computer went black. Um, I mean, before that, when uh, Boxside had looked into the knife, he had looked, you know, like he hadn't done a whole lot. So this is like, you know, you're looking refreshed. You're looking lit. The grayer. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not just you guys, though. Everywhere around you is losing color. Maybe we're just, oh. maybe we're just going colorblind. I hope so not. That's how we're supposed to match things. That's what you hire people for. God. Yeah, servants. You're right. <laughs> people don't have rights. That's illegal. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to steal this soap from me. I'm going to put it in a different pocket than the garlic, onion, and corpse does. Dead guy <laughs> does. <laughs> yeah, it smells really good. It's really solid. It's a nice quality soap. Cool. That one's, good. That one's for... That one's for me. That one's for Box. <laughs> are, are you quite done stealing things? Can we continue on our quest to get out of the rapidly graying home? Um, is there anything else in the bathroom? Um, there's like a tub. Ooh, it's is empty. It, is it like claw-footed? Uh, yeah. Nice. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna turn on the faucet to fill it up. Water filters through pretty easily. Uh, water is, it seems like good quality water. You can see through it. It's not like bloody or rusty or anything like that. Cool. I'm going to send you guys a picture of the map so far as you know it for convenience sake. Oh, okay. Because I also have one. Wasn't doing a very good job explaining it. It's really my... terrific. Oh, it looks pretty similar to mine, actually. Hell yeah, proud of you. But anyway. 
We just gotta get into the mystery room. That's the one where the door was locked. Oh. So we gotta find something to get into the into the locked door. Yeah. Is it by no, any chance this soap? Not doing very well. <laughs> Are you gonna try the soap on the lock? Maybe. What if it works? See, okay. Yours yours is pretty good. Yeah. Yours actually looks better than mine. Ten out of ten. Um Oh, you head up to this locked door, the one where the handle wouldn't even budge. Um, you start rubbing the soap up against the lock. You're, you're going to town. You are giving this thing a thorough washing. Nothing happens. The soap, like, dents under the impact of the handle, but it doesn't even mark the handle. No matter what you do, nothing seems to be sticking. Damn. I'm going to do something that's possibly very dumb. Hell yeah. Give, give, me, give me the key. Okay. I'm going to wind up the doll. All right. Um, You take the wind-up key, and you walk over to the doll that is slumped, and you stick it in her back, and you start winding it up. Um, After the first few turns, it gets easier, um, and she sits up. Um, She doesn't quite glow, per se, but she becomes a little bit brighter, at least. and after a few turns, she holds up a very delicate porcelain hand to stop you from turning um, and looks at the both of you. Um, her eyes seem to be glowing, almost purple, but because color is leaving the room, um, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, okay. Hello, hello, darling. We're in a bit of a spot. I don't suppose you could tell us how to get out of here. I can. My name is Allie. Hello, Allie. Very nice to meet you. I am Lady Elizabeth Boreas, and this is my friend, Boxite. Boxite, yes. It's a real name that real people have. Hi there, lady and box, real elf. Um, there's, there's a problem. The greedy king, he's being a big meanie, and he's locked us all in. And he's taken all our colors. It's not very nice. You're correct. That's very rude. That big door is how you guys are going to get home. But you got to do some stuff to get there. Because the greedy king is real mean. So greed is the villain here, huh? Yeah, hmm. it's symbolism. I tug at my collar awkwardly. What you're gonna have to do is break me open. Yes. Inside, I have the key to the first door. Then the magic from my crystal is gonna show you how to open all the doors and beat the greedy king to bring all the color back to the kingdom. I, I axe kick this fucking doll. <laughs> Give an attack roll. Like, I do like a Mortal Kombat wake up. Give me an attack roll at advantage. Whoops. She's a doll. She's not You weren't actually on a total wrong thought when you said, I'm going to put the doll in the hole and see if she's the key. Yeah, I'm surprised at myself. Also, I do want you to know that I did go out of my way to make you uh, do the doll once I learned that you were afraid of dolls. <sighs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, I, I knew that I could do it, but I chose not to. You're such a dick. <laughs> the 25? Yeah, I... This creepy doll. God. That's- you told this creepy, you heard this creepy doll ask you to break her open. You waste no time. You kick her straight in her little doll face, and she runs straight into the wall and shatters like glass. You hear a very weak, good luck, as she falls apart to pieces on the ground. Um, the glass separates, and as you poke around a little bit, you see there is a palm sized, long D20 looking sort of purple crystal that was inside her chest before him. All right. I put the key in one of my pockets, I guess with the soap. Congrats. And I will... You couldn't 
done that a little less abruptly? No. Elves aren't known for their patience. They gotta go now. I they only have 750 years to live, you know? It's Time true. Ticket. I, I don't know enough about elves to dispute that. <laughs> I jam that big old rock into that hole like uh, that fucking cutscene in DMC3 where Dante, like, FIFA kicks something into that hole. I bet you look real cool doing it. Yeah. So you set the uh, crystal into the hole in the door, and for a second, the door glows purple around where you set it. Watch the crystal push farther into the door, and the door lifts. Cool. You see that it is one of at least two, as now you're looking at a different door. This door has the uh, crystal glowing in the center and has a triangular slot up above it that's empty. You can tell another thing must be set in it. Um, just beneath it, there is a very flimsy shield on, on the door that glows purple. I was about to say, what color is this crystal? Is this crystal also purple? Um, so it's the same crystal as before and it just pushed back. Oh, okay. I was thinking there was going to be like seven rainbow crystals or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, uh, now you just see there is a, the, the crystal from before is in the center. There is a triangular slot directly above it where a new crystal can be set in. There is a flimsy shield like near the bottom of the door. It glows purple. Can I take the shield? removes very easily um and as you pick it up you hear a strange sort of from the library hmm. oh i do not care much for that i will equip the shield and go to the library give yourself a plus one it's a very weak shield i got my sword out and i'm following um as you two head into the library you see that the books you had tossed onto the floor have now picked themselves up and are sort of flapping like birds. They are rearranging themselves. Some of them are going back onto their shelves where they belong. Um, but you notice that um, three of them have set themselves onto the table. One of the three tables that there are. Terribly sorry about the mess. Um, books. I'm not. <laughs> You're the one that threw them all over the floor. I know, that's why I'm not sorry. I was glad to do it then, and I'm still super glad about it. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to go look at the books that are open on the table. Yeah. There are three books that you're looking at. Um, one is called A Dragon Story and has a picture of a knight on the front. One is called A Tale of Two Bees and has a picture <laughs> of a beehive. And the other one is called The Stone Magician. It has a picture of a rabbit. I'm going to start reading The Stone Magician. Um, where are you, box during this? I am also going to read something, but I'll let her go first. Okay. Um, second, Lady Elizabeth picks up the book and opens it. The book starts to glow, and you watch as she disappears. All right. Oh, shit. I will read the same book. Um, you God. pick it up, and as you start to read the words, you look down and see your hands start to disappear, and then you two are gone. And um, at first, there is just a blinding light of whiteness as you're standing there. Then you come to in a large, colorful sort of uh, theater. The color is here. It is bright. It is alive. Uh, you two appeared out in the audience. Um, there are no other people in the audience. On the stage, the red curtains are pulled back, and you see on the center stage, there is a sort of stone statue of what looks like a magician. He has a very big top hat on top of his head. He has a wand pointed at it. You see on uh, one half of his body, he has three rabbits that are um, either hopping out of his pockets or his sleeves or sitting by his feet. You see on the other half of him, there are... Um, little shelves of sorts, parallel, but three things could be set on. Hmm. Okay. Um, as you look around, you see that there is a sort of spotlight sort of just uh, circling aimlessly around the room. 
I'm going to go stand in the spotlight first and see if that does anything. Um, it is circling, so you have to run to keep up with it. Okay. But it just feels like regular light. Okay. Unless you're hurt by light, it doesn't do anything. Well, luckily, I'm not a drow, so I'm not. Yeah. Um, hmm. I will use Mage Hand to pick up one of the rabbits. Uh, the rabbits are firmly fixed to the statue. But as you come up closer to look at the statue, you see that the three shelves on the opposite side look like something was ripped off of them. Mm. And examining the rabbits that are hopping out on the other side, they seem to be sitting on platforms identical. So we're looking for rabbits. I'm going to start scouring for stone rabbits. Going to see if I can find them anywhere. Investigation. Investigation. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I should have, I should have upped my investigation score more, but I didn't. Because I'm a dummy. Doing great. That's 15. All right. Um, look around at this place, and you're like, all right. Give me some rabbits. So you start combing through the seats because that seems to be really all there is at first. Um, and you're going through all of them. You're looking underneath the seats. You find in the very last row a singular little rabbit sitting in the seat like it's trying to watch the show. But it's kind of ridiculous because this thing is very small and can definitely not see over the seat back. But that's so cute. Uh, it is a very, it's a palm sized rabbit. It's very cute up close. It's got little bunny eyelashes. Um, He's very happy for a stone rabbit. I'm going to scoop it up and bring it up to the stage. I'm going to write a complaint and hopefully make this theater more rabbit accessible. <laughs> As you should. Um, you come up to the figure and you notice um, it seems to match the pose on the opposite side of another rabbit. I'm going to set it next to the rabbit it mirrors. Mm -hmm. Or on the opposite of the rabbit of mirrors, you know. And as you set it down, you see that it seems to fit into the broken off space, at the very least. And when you connect it, there is a... Ooh, what the color? I'm sorry. There is a yellow glow. Hmm. Well. One down, two to go. All right. Is there... Um, up on the stage, you see the stage has a sort of back to it. Um, like there are ropes that are used to control the curtains and there is the spotlight still circling almost drunkenly. Well, Lady Elizabeth did a turn in the theater. She's going to go look around and see what she can find backstage. I will And follow. then maybe look in the pit. If there is a pit, I don't know. There is a pit. Uh, which one are you, go are you going to look backstage or in the pit? Backstage first, because I'm already standing on the stage. Investigation with advantage. Woo. I'm assuming because he's helping you look. Yes. He can roll if he wants to with advantage because you're helping him look. It's up to you. I don't care. Well, that is a 16. Okay. Um, as you're looking around backstage, it doesn't seem to really lead anywhere. Um, you can tell where, because you've been to the theater before, where a casting room or like behind stage would be, but instead there's just solid wall. Um, but they do have sandbags, and um, oops. And as you're looking around at the sandbags, one of them seems to have been um, sewn up a little bit, um, uh, but it has been cut open near the bottom. Despite that, like it's a consistent problem they have, and there is a small sand trail uh, leading towards the pit. Well, let's go to the pit then. Actually, full reference: whose intelligence is higher? I know blunters are uh, int based now. Um, fuck, what is my intelligence? My intelligence is a 10. All right. Mine is 18. Oh. <laughs> Stop. I've been slacking here. I've not been using my stats. <laughs> I'm pulling too much weight over here now. All right, I guess I should do the next uh, in investigation. So I will help you. <laughs> Advantage. Give me what you got. Jesus. All right. <laughs> Shaboom. Every time. 
I thought that was your role for a second. It's <laughs> like, wow, what? All Amazing. Right. Okay. So you follow the uh, trail of sa sa sand down into the pit. You see that it's arranged like one would normally be set up, except there aren't any people in there. They're just instruments. And as you're sort of looking around, tossing them around, you see that where there is a little violin resting in a seat, a little uh, stone bunny sits on it. Cool. Tiny, tiny stone bunnies are very cute. This one has its little arms outstretched because it's in the jumping position, so it looks like it's trying to strum the little violin strings. Nice. It's trying very hard with the stone. I may have to invest in a rabbit or two when I get back. They're just, they're very cute. You now have a stone bunny in hand. Congratulations. Gonna go back to the stage and see if I can figure out which slot it fits in. Glance across. Um, thanks, Jack. You see that uh, on one side, a rabbit appears to be hopping out of a sleeve. On the other side, there seems to be an open pocket that you could tuck the rabbit in. And doing so, do a yellow light glows as it fuses. There's still one shelf left empty. I will admit I did not spend as much time in the theater as some of my contemporaries may have. Do you happen to have any theater experience? Um, we could try climbing up to where the curtains are. We certainly could. Want to give me acrobatics? Hallelujah. Acrobatics is one of the two skills I have. So what you got? Perfect. All right. Oh, hell yeah. 18. So you're looking up at these curtains. They look pretty thick, pretty velvety. Um, you can get a running jump, grasp on there, and you're, you're climbing. You're giving it your all, you know. You've climbed trees. This can't be too much different, except it's made of, like, velvet, and it's not a tree at all. Um, you do manage to get to the top where it seems to be anchored to some sort of uh, pole fixture. And as you're hanging up here, looking around, you see uh, there's a sort of um, floating metal walkway hung up by strings um, where the spotlight seems to be controlled. And you see it is just spinning aimlessly. Uh, it seems someone knocked it off its stabilizer and it's just going. Hmm. All right, I will make my way up onto the catwalk. Uh, dexterity to make the jump. Okay. Just a raw dex. Uh. All right. Um, you're looking at this thing. You want to investigate. You give it a good old heave ho, and you land with a solid clunk. Your arms wobble a little bit, but you're up there. And as you sort of come closer, you see um, this thing is, you thought it had just been knocking around on its uh, base, but you see something is moving it. Something very, very small. Hmm. And as you come closer, what is your uh, armor class? My armor class? Um, so you said we had the clothes on. Do we have the armor of whatever we had on? Um, no, but you get a plus one because you're shield. Okay. Oh, so it's... Well, in that case, my armor class is just 16, then. Just. Well, anyway, I'm going to guess that a three doesn't hit you. I would hope not. Um, you look down as a very, very tiny bunny takes a leap at you and tries biting onto your pant leg. Oh, God. It's palm-sized and growling. Well, it seems very angry that you're on its walkway. As a D&D &D player, I will resist the urge to make a reference to Monty Python. And I will just, I will just kind of pick it up. Um, it rides around in your, you know, underneath your grip, but palm-sized. You can hold it entirely in one hand with no troubles. No, I won't need animal handling. You bite at you, 
Yeah, it's it's made of stone still. Anytime <laughs> it moves around, you can hear it's very easy to animate too. I imagine. Oh yeah, seems very grumpy. But down below, Lady Elizabeth noticed the spotlight has stopped dancing around, or at least. All right. What's your dex, you... Elizabeth? Lady Elizabeth. Uh, I am pretty dexterous. I got a 16. Cool. I will throw you the rabbit. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, give me a, be a saving throw to catch it. I can do that. Yeah. What like right before he throws it, I'm gonna be like, "Did you find it?" And then down from the heavens comes raining an angel, with tiny stone buck teeth. A, a non-natural twenty. You see the stone thing come chucking, and Lord, oh Lord, you throw your hands up, and you catch this bunny square between your fingers. It is wiggling around. It's making these tiny little growling noises. You've never seen anything cuter in your life. Well, hello, darling. It's a little... Uh, it's not very threatening because it's about the size of your hand. Well, I'm going to go see if I can figure out... Like, there's only one empty uh, spot left, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go put it in the empty spot. Um, Bunny is fighting you as you do. You hold it onto the shelf, and then you watch as a golden light overtakes it, and it changes its pose to mirror the one opposite it. And then the entire statue starts to glow. As you take a small step back, you watch as the magician lifts his top hat off of his stone head and turns it with a very uh, slow sort of stone grinding noise. He takes his wand and taps it to the brim with a, with a crisp uh, stone on stone sound. And you watch as, after he taps it once, twice, a live rabbit hops out of the top. It is a fairly large rabbit. Um, jumps just before you, where it stretches out, shakes its little bunny tail, and proceeds to cough up a triangular yellow crystal. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> One is much less cute. Do I have like a napkin or something? Like a, a handkerchief in my in my pocket somewhere. You know what? You're a lady. You probably have a nice monogrammed handkerchief in your pocket somewhere. Gonna kind of pick it up with that. <laughs> uh, you pick up the crystal, and you look up just in time to see the magician lift his top hat back to his head, give a stone wink. And then the whiteness overcomes you both, and you're standing in the library again. Uh, cool. I'm gonna just just hand him the crystal, just like here. I will uh, kick it into the door. Mm -hmm. Um, you head to the door where the triangular slot rests above. You hook it into place. And just like before with the purple one, it pushes back further into the door. And you watch as this door, too, lifts up to reveal another door. This one, you can see your purple and yellow crystals shining. They are, at this point, the only color in the room that you can see. And they are dim. Um, there is a slot to the left of the circle with a sort of diamond shape that is empty. And in a sort of pivot, in the door, there are three uh, small potions. Hmm. Cool. Do they have any labels on the potions? Like, eat me? Um, as you pick it up, looking around, um, there's no label, per se, but there is a small, um, so it's got a cork on the top, and the very, very top has almost a sticker of sorts, has a little uh, cartoon B drawn on the top. Hmm. Inside is a, I assume it would have been a comical yellow back when color existed. You get faint traces of yellow every once in a while. Um, it's not honey, you know that. Um, it sloshes around lazily inside. It seems to have some sort of uh, glitter to it. Um, and the bottle is sort of I don't want to call it hot in your hands, 
but it's not exactly the most comfortable holding it. Here, Boxide, would you like to drink Potion of Bees? Sure. Are I, you going uh, to wait? Wait, hang on. I out of character. Like, what the fuck is your constitution, dude? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> I'm a fighter. I it's sixteen. You were a, I thought you were a rogue. <laughs> You'd think so, but I'm actually neither an elf, uh, neither an elf fighter nor an elf wizard. I'm an eldritch fighter. I don't know what that is, man, but it's all right. A, it's a fight <laughs> wizard, essentially. Yeah. Ah. It's a Pretty wizard okay. with a... It's one of the variations of wizard with sword. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. But I just all decided right, yes, to roleplay as a hilarious rogue. I'll let you drink the potion of become bees. All right. I, uh, I, I tear the cork out with my teeth, and I spit it directly into the air, and then before it hits the ground, I chug the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> Um, so you hand him one of the three, and he hugs it immediately, and you watch as a uh, green sword of light uh, overtakes him, vibrates, and then suddenly there is no longer a vaguely purple elf in front of you. There is a bee. Is it the same oh, size God. as me, or...? Um, no, it is a regular bee size. And uh, Boxide, you, can st you still have your regular cognition and thoughts. You are still looking at the world as regular. Cool. Seeing as a bee is weird. Yeah. It's real weird. And these wings, how do they hold you up? You know, according weird. to all known laws of aviation. <laughs> I was about to make that joke. <laughs> yeah, isn't bee vision? All... I'm Googling a picture right now. A woman oh. standard bee costume. Oh, uh, you can see the black UV rays in the sky looking like arches holding him up. That's the best I got for you. I took uh, Buckside, is that still you? I'll... I guess Give it should like buzz, right? Not sting if it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, won't that kill me instantly? It depends yeah. on what kind of bee you are. Uh, you were trying to murder hornet. To a I don't female know. Bee? Congratulations. All right. Um, hmm. So I guess I'll just start dancing. Um, you're looking, and this bee starts doing a magnificent sort of waggle dance. Um, it's doing some little figure eights. If you were a bee, you'd know exactly how far away the nearest spot of uh, pollen was, but you're not a bee, so you just see this little bee doing its best. I'm so glad you picked I... up on my bee communication joke. I will take that as a yes, and I'm going to kind of put a hand out, like you can land on it I if will, you want. I will carefully buzz over there. Just you land on this uh, soft little little human palm. Get your little little feet out. You're looking down at your little corbiculas, the little pollen sacks, and you're like, nice. These are cool. Uh, we came here with too much bee lore memorized. <laughs> I took it into all, dude. I don't know shit about bees. Well, thank God we're <laughs> here. You'd be hopeless if this was just you on this <laughs> bee mission. <laughs> okay. Um, well, this is a pickle. Um, maybe we have to go to the book about bees? Bees? I was, I was hoping that that would be where we were going with this. It'd be kind of <laughs> weird if it was like, all right, bee, dragon, go. <laughs> you gotta go Ant-Man style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus okay. Christ. <laughs> I'm just going to start going to the B book. Mm -hmm. um, make your this way. This is my every nightmare. <laughs> we got haunted dolls. We got bugs. They are insects and they're trying their hardest. You make your way over to a tale of two bees with a bee in your palm. You pick it up and start reading. And again, the white blinding light hits you. And then you are standing in a... Um, Nice sort of flower field. I'm um, not too unlike the picture sent to the group chat. Um, you are there is a nice apple tree very close, and you can see that there is a beehive uh, dangling down from it. Should we go to the beehive? It's still a bee, and therefore cannot properly respond. I'll just go in Listen, there. Listen, right? I'm rocking a ten intelligence. I don't know what the 
fuck is going on? Holy shit, I'm the smartest bee in the world. I've got a fucking, what was it, 18? Yeah. Yeah, I've got an 18 int. I'm going to go in there and run much. this place. I'm going to just start walking over there. Mm -hmm. um, you make your way across the field. The flowers are beautiful. Um, as you go across, you see little bits of pollen sort of kick out as your leg brushes up against them. Um, sun is warm. This is a beautiful field. It's almost straight out of a dream. Um, I, I resist the urge to go pollinate. There's pollen it's all over my very nice dress. It's very hard to resist the urge to not go manch, but you're doing well. Only because you're in the palm of a friend and you have your own brain right now. But, um, you get close to the hive and see it's actually pretty big. Um, it's uh, probably from your head to like the bottom of your rib cage. Um, and it is swarming with bees. They seem very happy going about doing what they do. Yeah, I'll just go in there. Um, give me a perception. Regular, because you're using your mental stats. Okie doke. Is perception intelligence in this version? Doing great things. I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe we were both supposed to drink bee juice. <laughs> Um, all right, an 11. Um, so you start flying to the hive, and for a second, you look down at that flower field. Look down at all that pollen, and you're like, ooh. Well, that's a good point right there. But then you're like, wait, no, I'm not an actual bee right now. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a fraud. So you get yourself back up with those little small wings going, and you find the entryway. You make yourself in there. Um, crawl along, and it is swarming with real bees. For a second, you kind of feel like an imposter because uh, these bees look pretty tough. You want to give me a deception roll to fool these bees? Deception <laughs> Would it be with advantage because they are bees? You don't and know. I don't know. I feel like a bee would know what a bee is. This is a tale yeah, of but... bees, okay? They know bees are also like dumb as shit, though. Love them. Bees are really smart. Bees are one of the smartest uh, insects. They can count to four. Ugh. All right, so you're crawling through the way, and you don't know where you're going because you've never been inside a beehive. Um, and as you're sort of going around lost, you get a few looks because right now you're a lady bee, and you're sort of going towards where the drones are. You get that feeling pretty quick because you start notice noticing they have the sonic eye thing going on in this part of the area, and it's weird. You back right up. You give a little uh, antenna wiggle to be like, oops, my bad. You know, that pollen today, that's some good pollen. They just sort of buzz at you because I rolled the three. And, uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, give me investigation as you search this beehive. Okay. Um... Elizabeth, why, while he does this, what do you want to do in this giant field? Uh, I'm going to sort of clear a couple, several feet away from the beehive because Lady Elizabeth does not much like bees. I'm just going to kind of poke around to see if I can find any just rocks lying around that might be the right shape. Give me an investigation to look for rocks. Oh, why is it that it seems like every time I do something, my characters end up looking at rocks? Rocks are important. Right rocks up. are important. I Team. agree. So, Boxside, you're looking around. Um, you end up making your way to the area where they uh, cultivate the meals for the newborns. Um, and as you're going around looking at that royal jelly, you're looking at the stuff they feed the drones, you end up coming upon, um, lodged in one of the slots, there is this very, uh, I mean, it's not huge, but because you're a bee, it's kind of huge, a green diamond that glows. Nice. I got a 19 to look at rocks, but I don't think the rock I'm looking for is out here. As you're poking around, you find a few pebbles. Um, but this field is just thick with flowers. As you're going down, you find some little ladybugs. Uh, you find one praying mantis that chucked this little praying mantis arms at you very threateningly. You feel like you'd be a lot more afraid if you were bee height, but you are not. Still pretty scary, but, uh, no. Yeah. Oh, fancy crystals for you. Hmm. Damn. I will, uh... 
Can I eat some royal jelly? All right. Um, as you make your way over there, uh, three of the bees who are culturing it, uh, you a very offended bee noise because you don't speak bee when you are made into one. Um, and uh, sort of make their way in front of you to push you back off the royal jelly because you are not the queen. What do you think you're doing? Assume that's what queen. they're saying. Speak B. Hmm. What's my strength Maybe. as a B? I'm guessing zero. It's probably a minus one. Real cute though. Got strength on my heart. All right. I guess I will. I guess I will just. Let's let's get this rock and go home. All right. Uh, give me a strength roll and subtract one from it. Okay. For my normal strength or? Yeah, just a, uh, um, All right. So 14. You pull your way over to this thing that doesn't belong in here. This thing that you kind of need. You start pushing at it. You go start kicking at it with your six little legs. It's really nice to have six legs. That's uh, that's real dope. Um, yeah. Going at it, and eventually you manage to dislodge it from the hole. Um, as you do, you're getting some looks. Um, that's not what bees are supposed to do, but you're out here doing it. Um, but to give me persuasion to try and convince these bees that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing right now. All right. We're in a tale of two bees, and you have to make up for the work of these two bees. <laughs> you gotta make make up for the fact that there's only one bee. Lucky for you, I got a nine. So, these Ooh. bees, they're looking at you. You're moving something out of one of the little feeding slots, but you know what? You're doing it with Moxie. You seem to know what you're doing. Uh, you even get one of them to come over and help you. Nice. Because you're doing something important, obviously. You are taking the big, giant, green thing. So together, you and this stranger female bee start. You can't quite roll it because it's a diamond shape, but you manage to push it. It takes you a while because it's pretty heavy for a bee. But uh, Elizabeth, you look up to see uh, two bees come flying out of the beehive, holding on to this uh, pretty small green diamond of sorts. Which one of you is Boxeyed? I will... Uh... I will flap my wings in Morse in Morse code for me. You speak Morse code? I don't know. Does Morse code <laughs> exist in this world? I don't. <laughs> um, looking at the two bees, one of them is flapping her wings real weird, and the other one seems to be struggling to hold up this uh, diamond. I can only assume that you're the one being strange, so... Yes, okay. I'm gonna hold out a hand. Like really and far away from my body, like ew. I will deposit his arm as, as far as your arm goes out. The other bee helps you and sits on top of this uh, strange diamond for a little bit, uh, sort of squinting at the both of you, and seems to look kind of awkward, uh, shuffling its little two legs together because it feels like it's not welcome here. And then it flies back to the hive with its head sort of sank. Um, you guys get one last look at the sunlight before the blinding white light around you and you are in the library again nice oxide you have a few more moments being a tiny beautiful creature of god before you suddenly become a moon elf once again oh shit are you still in my hand when that happens oh yeah At the immediate drop your arm sinks back probably hurts a lot <laughs> how was your trip in the beehive it was okay. I would rate it like a B minus. <laughs> um, I feel like the other one has to be in this last book. So let's just do that before we start drinking any potions, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, let's let's do that. Wait. We might need a potion. You needed a potion for the for this. Well it's your turn, Can so start chugging. I'm going to look at the potions and see if any of them correlate to the last remaining book, which name I have forgotten. Dragon something? It's a dragon story. Um, these oh. all three of the potions seem to have been the, the bee mixture. Okay, cool. Let's take those in our pockets and then let's just feed them to the dragon. 
So cute. <laughs> Bold of you to assume one of us won't end up turned into the dragon. That would be sometimes. Let's Is take it? Also the soap, Always. just in case. Of course. <laughs> Alright, um, are you gonna, uh, pick up the story then? Yeah. 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 Pick up a dragon story. You open it, and like before, the white light finds you for a moment. Then you are, uh, you come to on a sort of mountain pass. Um, it is, uh, clearly cleared away. There are recent, uh, dragon tracks that lead up around the bend. Um, you see that there is a forest down below. Um, you don't recognize the area. It seems to be mid-afternoon. Do we still have our regular clothes, and do either of us seem to be dragons? Um, looking down, your clothes seem to have, um, a casual night wear. Like, like what a knight would wear beneath their armor. Cool. Have both the, of uh, Yes, both of you. Okay. Neither of you are dragons, unfortunately. Probably for the best. Staying over. But you are on a mountain pass. What you doing? Gonna look down the mountain pass and see what we got. Yeah. As you look down the way, it almost looks like when you're playing a video game and the world cuts out because they haven't designed that far. Oh. Um... It almost looks like they go off into crayon scribbles. As you glance up the path, it uh, seems to develop into more detail as it progresses. Well, I suppose we need to go up the path. That seems like a fairly good assessment. Would you agree? Yeah, let's go there. Plans. Um, you guys make your way up. Give me perception roll from both of you. Soon we're eventually we have to do something that I'm good at. What are you good at, my dear? I'm sorry. Cutting I'm very good at, at persuasion and intimidation, and that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's ten. So, oh, you guys a ten and a nine. Look at you both. Oh boy. Yippee, so you're making your way up. Um. Oxide, you're feeling pretty confident in this in this outfit. It looks pretty good on you, in, yeah. in full honesty. I mean, everything does, but, you know, this one's pretty nice. Um, Lady Elizabeth, you're kind of grossed out by this outfit. It is poor-looking. You are not above it, you know, not about it. But you make your way around the bend, come to, uh, there is a cave up ahead. Uh, but your attention is brought to a knight wearing the same sort of outfit you are, but properly decked out in uh, armor with the traditional headpiece. Um, as you two walk oh, yeah. up, he, uh, sorry, she uh, flips up the visor and looks over at both of you, uh, at first confused and then relieved, and waves you over. Do we have our weapons? Yes. Okay. They're in very fancy uh, hip sheaths. We should probably go over to the knight that seems happy to see us. Yeah. Um, as you two make your way over, um, you will see that she is a uh, woman, you assume. Um, not very old. Um, she sort of uh, smiles at you both. Um, about the time they sent my reinforcements, I'm needing your help. Got the beast cornered now. Oh. Okay. What? We weren't briefed. Uh, forgive my lack of knowledge. Could you give me a rundown? Deception or persuasion. Take your pick. <laughs> gonna do persuasion, baby. Yeah, get it. Okay. That's a 25. Hell nice. yeah. Say that? Cool. She kind of makes a face, um, but then laughs. Uh, 
typical Boris not explaining to the new lot. It's fine, it's fine. We've got us, we've got us a prime evil dragon up in there. And it's not supposed to be in that cave. That cave belongs to the king. So we got to clear that dragon out. It's evil. I'd be doing it, you know, but uh, I've got to keep an eye out for the next people they send. No. The next people? Are you suggesting we're going to die? Of course not, you know, just just trying to be uh, fully prepared. All anyway, right. get to it. Dragon, dragons don't don't wait for the lot of us. What what makes the dragon evil? It's a dragon. Are don't all dragons it. evil? The chromatic Obviously. Ones. Yes, um, Boxide, you would know. No, not all dragons are evil. That is a gross stereotype and should be corrected immediately. That is racism at its finest. Hashtag not all dragons. True. But yeah, usually it's um it's just the chromatic ones, the metallic ones are good. Um and Lady Elizabeth, you had heard this, you know to stay away from dragons typically because they can eat you. And stories are as story goes, but you know. Well, this could potentially be disastrous. Let's I go uh the Let's only go. way to get our magical rock. Maybe we can just steal it from him. Well, perhaps you could just steal it from him. Yeah. You Is that not what you do? I mean, I don't actually have any skills like sleight of hand or stealth, so it might be. This could be a problem. This could be. <laughs> Okay, let's let's go in the cave. Yeah, let's go in the cave. Maybe I can uh, persuade this dragon to give us a fucking rock. <laughs> um, as you two walk into the cave, it's pretty deep. Um, you're walking for a little bit. Um, you see that there is a small bonfire started a little bit into the cave, which allows Lady Elizabeth to even see. Um, but even before you get there, you can see that there is a large silhouette near the very back. Um, it is golden and shiny and seems to not quite be asleep, but more so just kind of laying there lazily, uh, looking at you guys with one big golden eye. Um, you see this cave is probably a good 100, 150 feet tall. Notice that there is a, um, uh, sorry, I got the color from the frog. There is a blue, uh, glowing light near the ceiling uh, of the cave. This golden dragon sort of looks at you guys almost bored. I'm gonna walk up to this dragon and be like, Hello, darling. I don't suppose we could trouble you for a bit of help, and we'll be out of your hair as soon as we can. Not that you have need hair, even. <laughs> um, the dragon lifts a singular brow ridge, uh, and then it's down again. Um, do much moving beyond that. If you would permit us to take that glowing blue crystal, we would leave, and you would be free to continue your life in this very nice cave. Uh, when you mention it, the dragon looks up to even see what you're talking about. Kind of blinks, almost in surprise, like it hadn't noticed it up there. It was, assume it's a shrug, it's more of a head tilt. Then it flops back down on the ground. Still uninterested. Boxite, I believe that's as good as a yes as we're going to get. Okay. Now, let me ask this. I missed what color this dragon is. It's gold. Gold, gold dragon. Okay. It's a shiny boy. Oh, it's a good dragon, dragon then. Probably. Let's go kill the knight. Must we always resort to murder? We could resort to theft. I would prefer to resort to theft over murder. <sighs> could also just double down. <laughs> okay. 
and get my sword out and follow him. Let's go, let's just go cut the knife. Um, let's just go kill him. <laughs> um. So you two out of the cave, and the knight um had been seemingly playing a tic tac toe game with herself uh, in the in the grass with her own sword. Um. Looks up in complete surprise to see you guys. Probably not expecting to see you alive again. Um. It's a little odd. Um. Is there a problem? I'm not even gonna say it. I'm just gonna walk up and stab her in the stomach. <laughs> Attack roll. All right. <laughs> Do we have to roll for initiative? But uh, yeah, after he does his attack. Okay. Jesus, man. Love it. We could have just taken the rock and left them all to their own devices. It's a magical storybook. All right. Does that hit her? Uh, oh yeah, with the twenty-two, um, who, who saw this golden dragon in this cave? Who heard this knight call it a fine evil dragon? You're like, oh, that's wrong. So you come up, you stab her right through. Um, she, it seems to hit. Uh, roll your damage. Cool. Just like, like yeah, prime evil doesn't even really mean evil. It just means real old. Mm-hmm. Um. She seems, uh, it, it hits her, it hurts. Um, she gives a surprised little, uh, hooked out sound and lifts her sword up, uh, initiative. Cool. Give me a roll to both of you. Oh, and I guess I should add my modifier. Well, it wasn't even as bad. Amazing. Guess I'm going last. I got, I got nine. Okay. Well, she gets to go first, obviously, because she got a 17, so. Uh, okay, she is going to swing at Boxide because he currently has a giant gaping wound in her chest. Uh, does a 17 hit your armor class? Um, You said that we now have armor on? Uh, No, you just have the plain clothes. Oh. Okay. In that case, uh, yes, it does. Okay. Uh, you get uh, six slashing damage as she uh, uh, brings her sword down uh, on your arm, just trying to get you. It hurts. Um, but your arm's still attached, obviously. Cool. Um, we are on to Lady Elizabeth. You watched as this knight uh, stopped at your friend for stabbing her. What you doing? Well, frankly, fuck this. I am going to go run back in the cave and start climbing the horde to get the blue shiny thing. Um, I will tell you, there is no horde. There is just a dragon. And this thing is 150 feet up in the air oh. in the cave wall. <sighs> I did not describe it okay. very well. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna... I guess I'm gonna <laughs> kill the fucking knight if I can find my goddamn weapons. Where are my weapons? Why is the only thing I have unarmed strike? Oh, what no. did I do wrong? <laughs> uh, let me just like pull up longsword stats real quick. What you gotta? It's just one d six slash. Uh, box okay, side because I'm two. No, you got this. But like, what's the modifier to to hit? Uh, plus. Plus your strength eight. or dex. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. So that's that is a eighteen to hit. An eighteen uh, hits her armor class. Uh, roll for damage. It's 1d6 plus your attack, so plus your dex or your strength. Add more if you've taken your blood. Ooh. True, but I'm not gonna just gonna start stabbing myself. I don't know how buff this lady is yet. That's 8 damage. Okay. Alright, it hit her. She did not seem to like that. Uh, she is not looking super great. Um, not that she was to begin with. Um, all right, Foxad, what you got? 
Um, I'm just gonna stab her again. For attack. Sorry for not rocking the boat too much. Oh, it's close stuff. Wow. Um, Damn. Roll for damage. Twenty-seven. Most definitely hits an armor class of fifteen. Oh wait, a long sword is one d eight. Oh. Oh right, a short sword is one d six. Excuse me. Bunk. He is looking mad bloody at that. Hell yeah. Uh, we are to her turn. Um, she is going to to stab you again. Uh, that is a 16. Cool. Hit. Every time you say your armor class, you're cut out. Yeah. Oh. My armor class is 16. I have five from my dex, and then I have one from the shield. Ty goes to the runner, though, so she hits me. All right, that is uh, six points of damage. Cool. Taking 12. They're now to Lady Elizabeth. She is not looking fantastic. Well, I'm going to stab the stab the stupid broad again. Go this ahead. time with my actual real stats, because I managed to fix this problem. <laughs> okay, so that's... That is a 19 to hit. It hits. And that is a D8. That's 12 damage this time. Oh, uh, you swing your sword and she gives a sort of cry as she comes down to her knees, seemingly unconscious at the very least. She's not moving. Let's go through her pockets. Uh, investigation. Shaboom. Wow. <laughs> A whole six, huh? <laughs> um, I... Yeah, you can also look if you want. Yeah, I would also like to look through pockets. This is investigation. If investigation. you'd like, you can just assist me and give me the, the bonus. Since... Yeah, you can also do that. You can roll with advantage. But I'm Okay, yeah, sure. Okay. All your memes and dreams in that order. Much better. Oh, yeah, 21. Um, so you're patting her down. Um, she's got some pretty nice armor on, uh, pretty high quality. She's the same tavern, that's the word I wanted, that you have on. Um, it's got uh, these uh, four shapes in sort of a uh, diamond of sorts uh, with colors on them. Um and as you're going through her pockets, you find there is a note that says, uh, clear out the cave and keep it that way. That's all it says. Cool. Let's bring the note to the dragon. Um, guys, head back inside. And where a uh, dragon had been laying before, it is now sort of sat up with a... Smile isn't menacing. It's more so relieved. Um, nice. And it uh, nods to both of you. I'm going to not. I'm going to curtsy, despite the fact that I'm wearing pants. I'm going to do that like a uh, ungraceful bow from Dark Souls 2, where you just kind of bend your shoulder and head a bit. About time the creature speaks to the both of you. Uh, Broad wouldn't let me alone. This has been my cave for eons now, and it's people come up thinking they've got right to it because I went out for a snack. The nerve. Quite right. Yeah. Hashtag not all dragons. We need that big old rock. If you don't mind, terribly. Yeah. Sorry you are so chase. kind just to get rid of my problem. It's the least I could do for you. Hell yeah. And you watch this giant creature stand up to its full height. It's massive. You feel like a bee again. Um, and Lady Elizabeth, you finally get the idea of what it might feel like to be a bee. And this creature flaps once, flaps twice, and the wax the wall with the crystal. Uh, the uh, You watch as the rocks dent in. The dragon reaches out, seeming to catch the uh, crystal, and flies down to you, and drops it very gently onto the ground. 
Much appreciated, darling. We'll be out of your hair as soon as you know it. Out of your scales? It's Spikes. quite all right. I'm going back to nap. Hell yeah. He settles down, curling up a lot more comfortably. Um, pick up the crystal and the world is white, is blinding once more. And we're back in the library. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah. All right. Radical. Go put the crystal in the door. Um, you head to the door. It was still on the one where you got the potions. So you set the green diamond shape in. It pushes back. The door lifts. A door is revealed with a square shaped hole now. That matches the blue one in your hands it in, door lifts, and this door seems flat up against the wall now. Um, so there are the three slots that are full of the smaller diamonds. There's the giant crystal in the center. And below it, there is a giant keyhole that is uh, pushed out from the wall, or from the door itself. And hanging off of it is a smaller key on a uh, necklace. Nice. Seems like the... Weren't there two locked doors on that map? Like, there was the front one, and then there was the other one? Um, all you know of is the locked one um, in the same room as you. That seems... No, no, no. I mean, like, th there's the one that we're currently sticking rocks into, and then there's another one that's locked. Yes, that's the... So you were looking at... You have the golden door you've been putting crystals in, and then there's the door that Boxide tried soaping up earlier. Okay, uh, I think probably we take the little key and we go look at the one box I was, like, aggressively washing earlier. Um, you come over to it. It is a pretty nice door. Um, it smells great, but there's no soap stuck to the handle or anything. There is a very small keyhole. Nice. Gonna stick the very small key in it. Um, as you turn it and the door starts to open... You're suddenly aware that there's music coming from inside. It's very nice, um, orchestral, like a band of some sort. Um, as you push it open, you come to a ballroom. It is a large room, and it is beautiful. There is a chandelier bigger than any you both have ever seen. Um, there are two balconies at the back of the room that wrap up to a sort of um, like an upstairs, sort of, not very big um, room. Uh, is full of people that seem to be frozen in time except for a singular, well-dressed man, pretty ugly if I'm honest, with a long cape and a tall crown. The crown has a, a red gem at the very top, but it's the only source of color in this entire room. Hmm. Any resemblance to the ugly teenager in the portrait? I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like him, but like 40 years later. Ah. Uh. Ugh. Doesn't seem to notice you because wherever this orchestra music is coming from, it's pretty loud. Let's sneak up behind him and stab him in the liver. <laughs> Give me a stealth and then attack. Okay, that'll just be a raw dex. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, oh no. Fantastic. Um, can I um, also roll like de stealth, please? <laughs> yeah, you can give your own one as oh, well. Jesus. <laughs> Okay, that is a 22. Nice. Okay, so Lady Elizabeth, you see this man, the only source of color in the room, sort of dancing by himself throughout this giant ballroom. And you have the sense, you probably want to be stealthy about this. So you're kind of hiding behind these people that are frozen. They are black and white, um, entirely stone. You can They remind you of the body you found in the coffin. Incomplete. Um, like they had started to load in and then just stopped. Um, so you are discreet. You are not seen. Oxide, you see this colorful man. His crown looks expensive. His cape looks expensive. You don't want to be here anymore. So you just kind of come running up, hoping the music is loud enough. Getting that you have boots on a uh, lick floor. Yep. So there is. And he looks back in time to... Uh, you so you do not get any sort of stealth bonus but do roll for attack 
All right. I will spell attack him. I guess that won't work, though. 13, you swing, and it hits against his outfit and sort of, um, there is a small um, glowing layer that stops your sword just short. Hmm. He laughs at the audacity, almost. Um, Seems my guests have awoken. I've been waiting so long. And please give me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, cool. All right. 13. Um, you watch as he lifts his hand and a part of the ground rises up directly from beneath you and launches you back 15 feet. Um, you take... Dang it. That's a whole six bludgeoning damage. Oh, man. You say, uh, this... Is like sword wizard. Are you squishy like a wizard? No, actually. Okay, that's good. Cause you've taken more damage than I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, roll initiative. Cool. See what y'all got. Oh, that's hey. my computer. Oh, no. Um, you notice that the stone he pulled up slowly sinks back down into the ground, and wherever the music is coming from, it stays. It picks up almost. I got a seven. Seven. Oh, you got a twenty-five. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, first roll, uh, first movement gets to go to uh, Boxide, who is uh, currently on the ground prone. So. Cool. Without getting up, I'm just going to shoot magic missile at him. All right. That's the one that always hits, right? Yes. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, surprisingly, lady, it's your turn. I got a one. Since so. we have... We've long lost the element of surprise. Just going to scream, You're a fucking wizard? <laughs> and then try and like jump in and attack this dude <laughs> he didn't seem to surprise the wizard he didn't know you were in there yeah uh, yeah what are you doing okay um I'm gonna try and stab this dude okay um yeah I'm trying to figure out what other like like good shit I could do. <laughs> like I played a fun a fun thing and I don't know what I'm doing. No one knows what they're doing at any given point, love. Believe in yourself. No, I mean like I really don't know what I'm doing with Bloodhunter. Um And out of ten. Hmm. Okay. That is a Plus that's a twenty-two to hit. That's uh that's gonna hit, yeah. And um Yeah, and I'm gonna Roll your damage, baby. Yes. That is nine, and I get uh, two attacks. All apparently. Right. Go for it. So do I? Do I have to roll to hit for both of them? Yeah. It's, it's. I've never played something that's gotten two attacks. <laughs> Doing great things. Far. I never get this far. <laughs> um, that's. That one is a 19. Yeah, that is. And... That's a 12 damage. Okay. That one, that one hurt a little bit more. But, uh, that's fine. That's good stuff. Alright, we are to his turn. Um, he has just noticed you because you were yelling 
um, screaming. Um, can you give me a dexterity saving throw? I can indeed, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, see, one of these days I'm going to play a character that has that accent. That is a natural 20. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. All right. So you watch as his hand sparks up with this uh, blinding bolt of lightning. It strikes at the ground near you, but you manage to hop away just in time with a little yelp. Very dignified. You lose the pollen off your dress finally. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's end of his turn. We are back to uh, go in box side. All right. Hmm. In the way of spell slots, I'm pretty wimpy. He's standing far away from us, right? Um. Yeah, he's about 25 feet from you. Neither of us have any ranged attacks, though, besides me. I have a crossbow somewhere. Somewhere. Stashed Somewhere in one of my, in my pockets. Dress, there is a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> or Dude. wait, no, there's not, because it's. We didn't find any crossbows. Never mind. Mm -hmm. So, no, I don't have any range attacks. I just have a sword. I mean, hmm. you ran up on him and hit him, so you are directly beside him. Okay. But, uh... So, I guess I shouldn't oh. cast, like, Fireball or Nuke or Meteor at them. I don't know. I think Nuke could be pretty fun, but that's up to you. Certainly try. Hmm. <laughs> Just, I, I know I can do it. I did one this morning. <laughs> Come on. I can. I can do a kickflip. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I guess I'll just burn another one of my slots for Magic Missile. Magic Missile. Magic Missile. Whoa. Pick him up. Nice. All right. Do math over here. Disgusting. Also, for reference, Megan, if you've ever seen The Witcher, that's what the Blood Hunter is. I haven't seen The Witcher. It's on my list of things I need to watch. Have you ever seen The Last done. Witch Hunter featuring. No. Uh, I don't the last, know what that is. It's a movie featuring Vin Diesel and Elijah Wood. I don't think anyone watched that except for me. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Okay, no joke. So Vin Diesel, fan of D&D, &D, right? This is a relatively well-known fact. Yeah. Matt Mercer mm -hmm. made the Blood Hunter class as a favor to Vin Diesel so he could play oh, as his character you... in The Last Witch Hunter. Are you fucking kidding me? And then, no, no, I'm serious. Love I love that. that. And then so uh, they can't call it Witch Hunter because of copyright. Because they get sued, yeah. So oh. they just change it to Blood Hunter. Yeah, there's this Geek and Sundry article. Vin Diesel brings Matt Mercer's new class to life, the Witch Hunter for uh, D and D. Beautiful. Um. Oh wow. Uh, but, yeah, yeah they recently. We are to lady. Yeah. They recently changed. Uh, Blood Hunter from a wisdom class into intelligence, and I'm so pleased about it. Intelligence doesn't get enough love. It does not. Oh yeah. shit! So maybe that's why I'm not doing very well. My int's not good. Yeah, it used to be wisdom. You also used to only See, have I a one d eight. My wisdom's not good either. I didn't put like any thought into that shit. <laughs> like my stats are all in charisma and dex. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I decided to play as a blood hunter only because Kenku Gunslinger wasn't an option on D and D Beyond. <laughs> you, you could have been playing with kitchen knife. Okay? I was gonna be kitchen gun. Damn it! Sorry, kitchen, kitchen gun. gun. I'm a fraud and a failure. New kitchen gun. Bang! 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 All clean again. Literally every time I hear Aha's take on me, I think of the kitchen gun remix of it. <laughs> I'm just gonna stab this guy again. Better that uh, twenty-five for the first one to hit. Go ahead. And another twenty-five for the second one. Both gonna hit. To hit. Yeah. So I'm just gonna roll damage. It's 
11 and 13. Nice. Very Sorry, nice. I can't do math. Very nice. All right. Um, it is his turn. Uh, I'm going to assume that a 17 hits you because you're not wearing armor. Yeah. Ouch. Okay, I'm not rolling super great. Uh, I mean, okay, that wasn't, wasn't bad. Um, you're going to take 17 necrotic damage as this dark energy pulses out of his open Yikes. palm and sort of big old shrieks at it. Um, he still seems to be dancing to the music, which is a lot faster now, a lot more hype. Um, for a second, it almost reminds you of, like, mariachi music. <laughs> uh, if that, were, that had been invented yet. It has not yet, but, you know. Ow! That hurt a lot. He's still hanging in there, and we are back to Boxside. This guy looking pretty beat up. He's looking pretty hurt, but you know he's smiling. He knows what he's doing. Um. Okay. Have has Lady Elizabeth moved away from him at all? Um. If you would like to ask probably her, probably shuffled away. After right. that, we can. We, yeah, you can say that. I mean, he stabbed me. I'm going to take a step or two back. Yeah. <laughs> like, ow, motherfucker, that hurt. Okay. I'm going to do an arguably... uh <laughs> going to do an arguably dumb move. Those are my favorite kind. What we got? I'm going to use my last spell slot and cast uh, one of this household's favorite spells. Oh, no. Um going to cast grease on him <laughs> what is grease supposed to do uh He's the here, lady. It, here it is in roll 20 <laughs> i'll put it up on the screen so what the f slick grease Fuck covers the ground in a right 10 now. foot square centered on a point within range and turns into difficult terrain when the grease appears each creature staying in the area must succeed on a deck save or fall prone <laughs> <laughs> I'm banking on his Jesus. I'm banking on his decks not being good alright let's see what the boy gets I'm gonna guess the 6 ain't gonna cut it <laughs> uh no you watch as this man in this beautiful robe and this big crown suddenly starts doing the cartoon slipping on a banana peel feet going everywhere bit and spins and falls directly onto his cape in this newly found environment of grease and immediately lets out this noise as he realizes you have stained his coat. Nice. Grease. Nice. And then I'm going to use a bonus action and regain some health. Okay. Jesus Christ, that's awful. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. All right, we got to the lady. Well, have I noticed the fact that there's just fucking grease all over the floor? Oh, yeah. Watched it appear. You watched the man fall. You heard him screech. It's like someone dipped over a bowl of chili. It's like someone dipped over say, a bowl. Understandable reaction. I would react the exact same way if my dress was all messed <laughs> Um. Jesus. Yeah, it's just... I'm just gonna fucking stab him again. You have to enter the terrain to do so. Not the office. Give him the chili. <laughs> you know. Curse the well, it's, it's the only thing I can do. <laughs> Make a deck save as you enter the area. Like, like I, I'm trying to. Uh, look yeah, the deck save is what I was planning anything on. Anything I can do. <laughs> I can't keep looking at. Like, I, <laughs> Yeah, I, I I was looking at things. I was like, literally, I don't think there's anything I can do this range right now. What kind of blood hunter are you? For it. I mean, he got a six. Six is my dex modifier. So I I want to believe I'll beat him out on that at least. Come on up. 
Michael Powers. That is a 24. You're going to be standing in this grease pile. You're walking just fine. Okay. I'm going to stab a motherfucker because hey, fuck you this are. guy. I'm sick and tired of his shit. Um, Music suddenly became very tragic. Um, it's very heartfelt. You feel it in your soul. In case you're worried. Okay, the first one is a 19 to hit. It's. And the second one is a 16 to hit. That hits. Okay, and I am gonna see if I can figure out how the fuck to do the, like, I can, like, stab a dude and give him fucking ice bad. How the fuck do I do that? It's a thing I can do, I know it is. I believe in you. I think it's your sanguine right, isn't it? It's... Oh no, it's crimson right. Crimson um... right. Yeah, every single every single spell yeah, okay. the or spell or tool in the Blood Hunter thing is either red or blood related. You know what they're about. Okay? Yeah, that's that's fair. Or mutagen, mm. which is yeah cool. Uh, so first, that's thirteen, and then plus one d six. Ice damage. That's 18, five of them ice damage. Oof. And I take, uh, that's only my first action, but I do take one d6 of damage, and that is a three. Nice, nice. It's, so not, a, it's not a d6, it's just six. Oh. No, it says on activating the right, you take one d6 damage. Oh, is it? Okay. I thought it was you just I'm take I'm looking at it level. right now. <laughs> okay, I am also looking at it. Interesting. Da, 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 da. Take whatever um, one is higher. I don't care. It'll be fine. Oh. When you, well, when you activate I a mean, right, you lose a number higher. of hits points equal to... Oh, they did change it. Okay. It used to just be your, your health. No, yeah, you're right. Your hemocraft die. Okay, and then... For my second attack... I'm just gonna stab him regular. Stab him regular. Which oh, is, it just you know, stays on. A basic bare bones stab. Megan, it just stays on. Nice. It's only when you activate it. The ice oh. stays on the blade for, okay, cool. uh, for the duration. How long is that? Uh, While you hold the weapon or until you complete a short or long rest. Okay, cool. Oh, cool, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that just stays on. For a neat. 12 plus. That's uh, 14 damage for that one. Nice. Ouch. It's cool they changed it to the uh, to a die. I, didn't, I, I knew about the, the int shift, but I didn't know about the change to the die. That's pretty rad. Ruined my cloak and now my day. Ugh. Disgusting. Uh, all right. Um, is he can't quite stand up? Um, but he is going to aim out at the man who caused the grease spill because he is more mad about his cape than dying right now. Um, give me another deck save. Cool. Sorry, just trying to type and nothing's happening. Oh dear. It's cause, it's cause the chili gif, it's still here. Yeah. Okay. Um, that time you do manage to save. Um, so you instead take that's, uh, five points of bludgeoning as the earth shoots up and manages to smack your side, but it doesn't launch you up again. All right, cool. There to your turn. It looks awful. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll just run in there and, and stab him, I guess. Are you, uh, susceptible to your own grease pit? <laughs> oh, yeah, I still have to make the save. Okay. 
Luckily, my next How is long damn did high. Grease last? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> God damn it. A whole six. That's a natural one, too. You you roll. Walk into there. You're ready to beat this guy up. He looks horrible. Your foot slips out from underneath you. You cartwheel spin. You land on one of the onions, and you feel it break in your pocket a little bit. <laughs> Ego hurts more than anything. All right. You smell great. Can I slide to Warden and throw the corpse dust at him? <laughs> Gives him another legitimate question. How long does Grease last? One minute. Okay. It's beautiful. Gives another horrible as the corpse dust touches him. He clearly knows what it is. <laughs> uh, flinches away from you. You're too lady. You just watched your uh, brave eldritch knight type uh all land on his onion and throw corpse dust. Oh my gosh. Why did I check if he was a vampire? I'm gonna throw the garlic. I just <laughs> threw sand in his eyes. There's a very, very dramatic sigh, and she's just gonna stab him. Go for it. Just stab a dude, and if necessary, I'll stab him twice. You said he's looking probably. pretty rough? Yeah, you're probably not gonna need to go twice, but let's see what you roll. Okay. 22 to hit. 22 will hit. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go ahead and roll damage for the first one. Mm-hmm. Twelve plus one d six of ice. That's sixteen damage. Nice. He had five left. So, as you uh, <laughs> cut into him with your icy blade, watch him throw his hand up in a little uh, last sort of dance pose. The music cuts. He collapses with a dramatic sigh, falling into the grease. Super dead. Um, looking up close, um, he has a large crown on his head. I hate these dogs. You're able to see that he, there's this large red crystal in the very center of it. When I say large, I mean this thing is massive. This is like um, almost forearm sized. Sort of jam. Take it out of the crown. Kind of heavy. It's heavier than, than the other ones. It's bigger. So it's actually heavier than the doll was. Are we just going to sit here and wait for the grease to dissipate? I mean, we might have to if I can't get out of it. So I'll just make... Well, I'll, you might have to. I'll make my save. I'll do it right now. Live while everyone's watching. I'll just do it. Do it right now while everybody's watching. Wow. Just when I needed it. A natural 20. Oh. You watched this man fall down, you've lost the music, you can think straight. Not only do you stand up, you uh, just sort of flip up, you land on your feet, some corpse dust goes flying from your hands like fancy glitter, striking a pose. And for a second, we can all forget that you just fell in grease and threw a corpse at a man. <laughs> you get a very sarcastic clap. <laughs> <sighs> Yippee. From Lady Elizabeth. All right. Let's get this stupid thing out of here. Oh, where are you guys heading from here? Back to the fucking... Wait. What? There... Was there another hole in the door? I thought it was for another key. Yes, there is a... There's a huge keyhole in the door. Let's fill it. With the rock? Yeah, let's just see if it okay. works. Let's try it. Why not? Um, Give me a strength uh, check. Her or me? Uh, whoever is going to be stuffing the giant crystal into... Trying to stuff it into the keyhole. Well, how's your strength? Uh, I have... A what the fuck is my strength? I've got a sixteen to strength. Uh, okay, you do it then. I think you have a higher strength than me. <laughs> okay. But oh, nope, they're not good. Believe in you. Okay, that is uh 
14. All right, so as you take this gigantic crystal and sort of jam it against the key, keyhole, knowing that it's probably not going to work, it doesn't fit, but you do notice the crystal sort of uh, fractures up along the top, and you realize it seems to be just colored glass. Interesting. I'm just hand it to Box. I just break this. I'll just drop it. Does that work? You drop it, and just like the doll whose pieces are still laying on the floor, it shatters at your feet, and inside was sitting a very large red key. Nice. Let's put that key in the lock, I guess. You push the key into the lock, and you turn it. It clicks, and um, again, there is that white light it's coming from the door itself as it starts to lift up um, and you are able to get one last look at each other as you're regaining color as the castle behind you starts to rebuild starts to clean itself up again Ooh. you wake up in your homes nice thank you for playing all right Woo! we did it oh you guys want to know something funny what's up what this was the plot of dora saves the crystal kingdom uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wow, there's like there was one of every color. I wasn't totally left field. There were four crystals. The king stole them to take the color from the land. I'm on the Dora Explorer wiki. Yeah, um, the magician one. The Hispanic toddler. God, there he is. It's him. (laughs) We found him. Dora está la biblioteca. There he is. That motherfucker. Bitch. I had uh, to change the. There were originally four stories, and the wiki only had two of them explained, and Jack didn't remember how they went, so I had to make up the magician one, and I changed the bees from butterflies. Like, oh, falta e- fal- fal- ego, ago. I can't read. <laughs> this plot summary is incorrect, incomplete. <laughs> Fuck, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Why'd I read it? You guys did, <laughs> and you completed it. We <laughs> did it. God damn it. We completed a Dora mission. Yeah, you We're did. as competent as a toddler. There's this uh, a bilingual toddler. Yes. I made up a few things to like disguise. Like a weirdly people. autonomous bilingual toddler. <laughs> <laughs> One of those college faring job having bilingual toddlers. I know how it goes. <laughs> what it do? What be? One shot though. I have a lot to work on, but like, I made that up in four hours. God. That was real good. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> you guys were playing my first one shot with me. That was pretty neat. Hell yeah, it was fun. Thanks for having us. I now have confidence. This is so exciting. Who knows what I'll make next? Yeah. Hopefully it has corpse dust. I believe in you. Would you like me to upload this? I can. I mean, I'm not opposed. Just, dude, no offense, but why do your characters always just steal random shit? I love doing I... it. <laughs> it in... was like skeletons, and then you were just like eating everything. In uh, so for 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 Grim, I had to keep the skulls with me because uh, it would ensure that I uh could resurrect them because I was a necromancer god. Uh. I mean, Cygnus stole everything, too, if I'm what remembering Cyg- correctly. Oh, yeah, Cygnus, Cygnus took teeth. Cygnus took teeth Did. like Dog the Bounty Hunter. Your playlist, you had yeah. my shiny teeth with me. Um, I made a playlist. Oh, Jesus Christ. I just, I like having trophies from the enemies I kill. I like being able to look at them and be like, oh, yeah, that was a good fight. Uh, you were lame. I just I basically just reached in there and yanked that thing out. Of course, I say that, like, Hope definitely stole doorknobs. It's true. In North what the Washington. hell was that about? <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll have kneecaps, damn it. Ryan. <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> anyway, that was real fun. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, Connor, I'll be back into Columbia on Saturday. Radical. Oh. Ooh. There's Megan. Please come home one day. I hope you get one of those jobs. Hopefully. Miss you. I'm trying. Okay. I miss you guys too. <laughs> yeah. I miss being somewhere that doesn't suck. 
Columbia kind of sucks too, but like it's fine. It sucks less because we're all together. Yeah. It sucks less because it's not Marshfield. Sucking together should be the title of my autobiography. <laughs> so good. I was tempted to try and find a SpongeBob thing that I could run off because neither of you have seen it and I could get away with it. Oh, wow. <laughs> you could. I could work you with. totally could have. So just keep your eye out. Next time you might be playing a SpongeBob thing and have no clue. Yeah, there's this, uh, How are we? There, there's this one D and D podcast. I I read about it. I, I didn't watch it, but this uh, the DM's like, okay, guys, for season two, don't watch this one movie. If you ever see this movie around, just don't watch it. It's what the next campaign's based around. Uh, but the movie in question doesn't exist, and uh, the campaign very quickly turns into a, a an eighty slasher movie. That's beautiful. I, I can't think of what the podcast. I love that. That's delightful. Gosh, see, we could do that. My next one will be a slasher movie. <laughs> Enjoy those. Next time you guys will be playing Maybe. wrong. Uh, my favorite. You'll get some. Oh, no. uh, nice uh, no kitchen gun. We can play kitchen gun in a story about zombie inbred cannibals who are also rednecks. <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> It'll be a lot more All noticeable. Right. If we're yelling. But... I wish. I wish that TNT Beyond had a Kenku option. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you, I'll, I'll send you this, the, the thing I use to make my things, and it has all the existing books out there on it. You can make as many Kenkus as your little kitchen gun heart desires. If I can find this one thing, I used it to make pepper. Like, it didn't have anything fit, but I just, I, like... Yeah. Did a homebrew class or whatever and just put in the stats. If I can oh. find that website again, I can just do that, but with, you know, Kenku. It happen. We'll get it. Anyway, my step parent, well, my step has been coming down and giving me some glances for being Whoa. fairly loud while they try to go to sleep. So I may have to end this here. Oh, bunk. That's cool. Okay. Good campaign. Love you, bye. Thank you for fun. Yeah. Thank you for playing Dora Saves Thank the Crystal fun. Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be proud of that till the day I die. Anyway, uh, talk to you guys Bye. later. Bye. 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 <laughs> I'm fucking furious. I didn't recognize Dora. Me too. <laughs> Hispanic toddler doll. Son of a bitch. <sighs> <laughs> oh, even the shapes. Can you name what this shape is? Oh my it's god. It's a dodecahedron. You're right. You're right. We were such fools. I'm just... God, I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of fury that only comes around once in a lifetime. <laughs> we were going for the wrong medium. We were going for, uh... We were going for R.L. Stein. We were... We had to be younger. We fucked up. We're fools. I am Boo Boo the Fool. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. I got way too attached to this character now. I'm going to have to do something with her for real. Man, maybe we should just come back in another week and record a one shot. Honestly, I would not even be mad at that. <laughs> it just keeps happening to these same two poor bastards. Like, god damn it. We keep getting made into, into the stens like guinea pigs. It's like, ah, why, why does this keep happening to just us? <laughs> god, I should not be sleepy. <laughs> It's only 10 p.m. What am I, Grandma? <laughs> it's possible, right? I guess. <laughs> well, anyway, good night. Uh, good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy.